This is a prophecy report entitled, Preparing for a Wedding by Damon Duck. On October 19th, a reader sent me an email titled, Waiting, Watching, and Rejoicing. As the world is preparing for war, heaven is preparing for a wedding. Those who believe in the promises of our Lord will become the bride of Christ. They anxiously wait for their special day. Our Lord must long for his bride as well. His love for her was and is much deeper than our understanding allows us to grasp its fullness. He came to die for her and now is ready to bring all the Father gave him to the wedding, sparing her from the wrath soon to come. Our job is to pass on the message of salvation, its simplicity, and the special nature of God's love of sinners. The Bride of Christ, the Church, is on earth now, but heaven is preparing for a wedding between the Church and the Bridegroom. Dr. Tommy Ice, Executive Director of the Pre-Trib Research Center, commented on this. The Bride, which is made up of the corporate and collected members throughout the Church age, taken to heaven at the rapture, makes herself ready for an impending event. How is the Bride or the Church made ready? She is made ready by clothing herself in the fine linen, bright and clean, which is said to be the righteous acts of the saints. This statement means that by this point in history, right before the second coming, the sum total of the bride, the body of Christ, is in heaven and has already gone through the Bema judgment where church-age believers are to be evaluated for their faithfulness to Christ during this present age. The result of going through the judgment seat of Christ results in the bride being given fine linen that Revelation 19.8 says is the righteous acts of the saints. This is how his bride has made herself ready. Ready for what? She has made herself ready for the marriage of the Lamb. Thus, within the framework of the symbolism being used in this passage, it means that the marriage, the marriage ceremony, takes place right before the second coming. I will add that this is one reason to believe in the pre-trib rapture. The church will be in heaven before the second coming. The events that are going on with Israel and her neighbors seem to indicate that time is short. Here are more reports from this week's news. I have great respect for Jonathan Brentner. He is certainly one of the most reliable prophecy writers today. And here is something he wrote that I think is very important, dated October 20th, 2023. The pain and overwhelming grief caused by the current attacks on Israel will make the peace plan offered by the Antichrist all the more appealing. This is the covenant that kicks off the 70th week of Daniel, which we refer to as the seven-year tribulation. The leaders of Israel will believe that the terms offered by the man of lawlessness will save them from another devastating war, but he will betray them after three and a half years, which will cause many of them to flee for their lives, Matthew 24. If the rebuilding of the third temple is part of the deal, it will make his covenant all the more inviting. Wars and rumors of wars in the Middle East and the world are far from over, but the current war could eventually lead to a worthless seven-year covenant of peace and the rebuilding of the temple. If this current war leads to the battle of Gog and Magog, readers should know that good prophecy teachers differ on whether that is before the tribulation period or during the tribulation period, but they all agree that it is an end of the age event. The solution to the Middle East conflict is for both the Muslims and the Jews to accept Jesus as their savior. The Jews will do that at the second coming. The lost will be removed and there will be a thousand years of peace, justice, and righteousness on earth. Time will tell about how all this plays out, but people need to be prepared for the wedding or be saved just in case things accelerate and these events are sooner than expected. Concerning the Battle of Gog and Magog, on October 20th, Joel Rosenberg, editor-in-chief of All Israel News and All Arab News, said he believes that Israel may launch a preemptive strike on Iran before Israel finishes off Gaza. Rosenberg said that Iranian officials 
said that they will attack Israel if Israel invades Gaza. So if Israel is going to have to fight Iran anyway, why not take out Iran first? Many world leaders would like to see Iran's nuclear facilities taken out, and Iran is giving Israel an excuse to do it. Concerning the war in Israel on October 20th, Israel's defense minister said, Israel is operating under a three-phase plan for the war that is focused on eliminating Hamas, destroying its military, and destroying its influence over the government of the Gaza Strip. Phase 1 is underway now, and it involves airstrikes to destroy Hamas terrorists and the infrastructure they have put in place to wage war against Israel. Phase 2 will be a lower intensity war to destroy the pockets of resistance and infrastructure the airstrikes didn't get. Phase 3 will be to turn the government of Gaza over to the new leaders who won't attack Israeli citizens. Concerning the prophecy that Israel will have a great military at the end of the age, on October 20th it was reported that thousands of ultra-Orthodox Jews that have long claimed that they are exempt from military service, supposedly because their job is to study the scriptures, have suddenly signed up. Israel's already powerful military is suddenly becoming more powerful. Concerning world government, on October 21st, during a campaign speech in Washington, D.C., Biden said, The current U.S.-led world order has sort of run out of steam. We need a new world order in a sense. I think we have an opportunity to do things if we're bold enough and have enough confidence in ourselves to unite the world in ways that it has never been. So, Biden has hit the 2024 campaign trail talking about a new world order that will unite the world in ways that it has never been. It sounds kind of biblical to me. The current U.S. world order didn't run out of steam. There has been a deliberate fundamental transformation of America and the world since the transformation of our world 2030 agenda went into effect January 1st, 2016. Concerning the ancient vessels that were removed from the temple before the Romans destroyed it in 70 AD, on October 23rd, it was reported that a Jewish rabbi in Rome said a leading Italian representative from Italy's ruling party said Rome has the temple vessels and wants to return them to Israel. According to the article, the Italian parliamentarian said, quote, We have in Rome the implements of the Jewish temple, the golden menorah, and many other temple vessels and tools that we took from Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. With these vessels, you brought light into the whole world. They are with us. By keeping them, perhaps we're preventing you from fulfilling your destiny. If so, we will return them to you. If you want them, take them. It won't be easy, but if this is what will enable you to fulfill your divine role, then please, they are yours. They are lying in our cellars. We aren't doing anything with them. Now, I do not know the facts, and this is the only report I have read about it, but if this is true, it is truly amazing. Concerning world government and the decline of America, on October 24th, it was reported that the U.S. Customs and Border Protection is warning that members of Hamas and Hezbollah may try to enter the U.S. at America's southern border. Finally, are you rapture ready?